Hi, welcome to another episode of CC Top Solutions. Today, we're gonna take a look at an old and familiar enemy, our hydraulic clutch slave cylinder in our C4 six-speed Corvette. So why doesn't everyone just go ahead and pull up a little Tiger Flood and watch me change the slave cylinder in this Corvette? It's gonna be probably very simple, but it's something that I've been putting off for years, literally. And it can uh, really make a world of difference if I destroy the transmission. So that's what I'm going to do today. Sit back and enjoy. All right, first step, we're going to have to bring the car in here. I'm going to put it on ramps and hopefully that gives us enough clearance to crawl underneath there and get to our existing slave cylinder. Here's the replacement one. Looks pretty schnazzy, right? Rock Auto. All right, we're up on our ramps. As you can see, we had to put some of our alignment tools down here to get up on the ramp without that front rubber, this piece, catching the ramp. But whatever, we made it up. We're all good. Now let's uh, let the exhaust cool off a little bit. We'll get underneath there and see how we're looking as far as access. I think we're gonna have plenty of room. Okay, so we've got this up on ramps. I decided to try and crawl underneath there, and uh, yeah, that's not enough room. We're gonna have to go ahead and get out our quick jack lift system to get this thing in the air. Who wants to go for a ride under the car? Oh, this is much better. And there is our clutch slave cylinder. And you can tell it's been leaking because you can see the paint is flaking off of it. Well, all right, this should be easy enough to remove. You can also see the moisture <laughs> at the bottom of it. Another clear sign that there may be a leak. Just maybe. First things first, these are 13 millimeter. So I'll pull those both off and this thing can come right out. Yeah, we always like to put a little good luck penetrating oil on the hardware. That should help. Oh, getting a little low on this. And for the heck of it, we'll hit the tubing too. Mmm, smells good. I love the smell of penetrating oil. Well, that came out real easy. Brake fluid basically poured out the front of this cylinder, so clearly the seals inside there are what's failed, so that's good. Smoking gun. All right, we got our old, old slave cylinder out. It wasn't that bad. It was a 14 millimeter wrench to break the tubing free. You can see our old one in comparison to our new one. Huge difference in this flange thickness. This one's cast iron, weighs about three pounds. This one, I think this one is steel. Stamped steel maybe? And that weighs about two pounds. So it's gonna be a little slower with this one, but it's okay. As long as it doesn't leak, I don't care. Okay, we got our new clutch slave cylinder installed. Remember, these are 13 millimeter nuts, and this is a 14 millimeter nut on the tubing. Uh, the way it worked is I put the tubing on first with the slave cylinder sitting to the side and then I kind of had to jockey it up into here and I had to put a little force on the slave cylinder to actually force it in because the pin was holding it out from the actual studs. Once I forced it in I started this stud then I started this one and now I'll tighten them both down. Piece of cake! Now that the new slave cylinder is installed we need to top off our master cylinder which is located right beneath here. You can kind of see it right down yonder. So we'll go ahead and unbolt that bracket. Here I leave this kind of loose. This is uh, years of experience of owning this car talking. Oh man, <laughs> it was loose. Last time I tried this, I don't know. Here's our master cylinder. So we'll go ahead and open this up. Wow, everything is tight. <laughs> what is going on here? Some of you may be curious, how do I know? Or how did I know that this slave cylinder was leaking? And the way I knew was because about every time I had to take it out, every time I decided to take it out, I would have to put fluid in here or else my clutch pedal would be all spongy. And uh, also with a spongy clutch pedal, right when you come off the floor, the clutch would fully engage. Dead giveaway that there is a problem with that system. We filled our reservoir with fluid and now they say to, to exercise a self bleeding system, you have to hit the pedal like a hundred times. You'll start to feel it get a little tension. Right now I feel like nothing. <laughs> Obviously, or else I wouldn't be able to do this by hand. All right, uh, shoot, I lost count. Let me try, let me start over. <laughs> wow, to my surprise, that fluid went really quick. So when you do go to bleed that system, make sure you monitor your level. It, uh, 
I guess the empty slave cylinder takes quite a bit of fluid out of the matter. So it's kind of hard to describe, but you see our level now. I've been bleeding this down by hand, literally just taking my hand and pushing the clutch slowly while watching from like this angle. And you can actually feel it starting to engage and disengage. With each pump, you feel that engagement level moving further and further up the pedal, which is really what you want. You want it to engage kind of far out in the pedal so you get a nice gradual engagement, uh, which basically means each pump of it, more and more air is coming out. And I'm doing it nice and slow so it's not splash over here. And I can also kind of keep an eye on my level so I don't drain it down and push more air into it. So a little bit of time has gone by since we did our clutch slave cylinder job. And lo and behold, I had clutch issues the other day on my way home. And now we're gonna be doing a master cylinder. You might be curious how I know that. Well, first off, look how wet all of this is. That is brake fluid. Yuck. Uh, so what's going on is symptom wise, I go ahead and disengage the clutch, which means I hit the pedal. And as I let go of the pedal, or even as I don't let go of the pedal, if I hold it down, the clutch slowly re-engages on its own. Uh, it's driving me nuts. Not only that, but I'm also having to top off the fluid almost constantly, so it's shot. The new one is on the way. Lesson learned. When you're gonna replace the clutch slave cylinder in one of these, just do yourself a favor, do the master cylinder at the same time. Our Rock Auto clutch master cylinder has arrived. Does anybody here notice a difference? The one that's in the car right now is black. This one is bare metal. Tisk tisk. Looks like I'm gonna have to return it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just gonna put a little clear coat on there because I can't stand it when this stuff rusts up. It looks terrible. Even though you can't even really see it on the car, it will just bother me. So I'll clear it. All right, here's our clutch master cylinder. There's two bolts in the back that we'd have to get to to pull it out. But before we do that, we're gonna go to our interior, drop our floor panel or floor guard or cover or whatever this piece here is called and pull the pin out of the clutch pedal. Then we'll undo all that other stuff and we should be good to go. While we're down here, that's also gonna expose our port for our uh, selective ride control error code. So we'll read that and see what's going on with that. This view gives us a real clear vantage point of our actual clutch master cylinder rod right there. And you can see on the firewall how, uh, how wet and rusty that all is. So clearly that's it. We just have to undo that clip that's holding it in place. So you can see how I've rotated the clip. I just used a, a flathead screwdriver, rotate this clip and pry it open just a little bit. And then you just push up on it, just like that. Whoa, and there you go, it's off. Almost off. Oh, now it's off. Putting it back on might be a little bit trickier. Well, I was gonna try and do this with the battery in place, but you can see the fitting at the bottom of the master cylinder. That's that 14 millimeter for the tube that goes down to the slave cylinder. Well, I just can't get to it. Uh, I mean, looking from this angle, there's no no luck. So uh, I think I'm just gonna pull the battery. Throw in a towel and pull the battery. Boo. What's that Eddie Money always says? Shake it. Check that out. We can easily get our 14 millimeter into here now to get this out. Man, nice new one with a clear coat. That's gonna look sharp there. The two bolts that are holding the actual master cylinder in, those are 13 millimeter. The bottom one, ah, even the bottom one's really not too hard to access on this angle. Actually, it's very easy to access. Both fasteners are out. Now we should be able to just, our tube is disconnected. We should be able to just, boop, boom. Here we have our original and here we have our new. The new is still tacky, so I'm not gonna install it just yet, but I think this is interesting how there's a, a hole drilled in the reservoir and a tie wrap kind of holding it solid. Uh, I'm gonna repeat that on the new one. I think that's a good idea. I'm assuming that's a GM factory idea. And uh, who would I be to argue with them? Now the new one also looks physically bigger. So we may have a little more difficulty wedging that in. We'll cross that bridge as soon as the paint dries. As you can see, we have our bolts started, but they're not actually tightened up. I was able to tighten, start them both by hand. I can reach the bottom one from here. And you can also see that that gray on there, uh, everyone knows me, gotta throw a little anti-seize on there, a little Permatex anti-seize. I mean, theoretically, the next time I have to change this, I'm gonna be like 60. So uh, I'll be really irritated if I didn't spend the time to just lube this stuff up. Don't make the same mistake I made. When you do this, make sure when you put it in, the rod that comes out the back of the clutch slave cylinder, or master cylinder, 
is on the driver's side of your pedal. When I put it in, it was on the passenger side, so I had to loosen everything up, get down there with pliers, and push it over to the other side, which ended up just being a nuisance. Don't do that. There we go, installation complete. Uh, to get the clip on with a little bit of a pain, I held these up underneath and sort of pressed the clip in and then pushed it up. That was how I got it. Uh, definitely, it was a pain, but it's in. And bleeding, I bled it the same way this time as I did last time. Used the guns. I ended up hand pumping that thing like 150, 200 times and eventually it started to get hard enough to pump that uh, my arm was tired. I was winded. So that's how I knew it was fully bled. Ready for a drive. All right, now I'm gonna put the battery back in and definitely go for a cruise. Before we put this all the way back together, I mean, the clutch is good, but my selective ride control idiot light is on. So we're gonna troubleshoot this again. I've done this in a prior episode. For those of you who don't remember, this is how you do it. This connector is normally oriented in this direction. You jump pins A and C, it's these top two. I'll, uh, I'll put a picture there so you can see what I'm talking about. Jump two of them together. So here's our jumper wire. Boop, and boop. There we go, jump together. Now all we have to do, turn our key to the on position and record our code. Key on. And this will start, oop, this will start be, uh, blinking the code. All right, so it was one, one, two. So the code was 12, one, one, two, 12. So see, it, it'll do it in patterns. One, one, two, so there's another 12. All right, so we got first code is 12. Second code, 13. Okay, you saw that we ended up getting that R11 code, which is the uh, driver's side rear tire, so rear shock. So I took this out and took a look to see what's going on here. Uh, everything seems to be okay. I was actually looking to make sure the gear was protruding above this far enough, and it appears to be just fine. Uh, as far as movement, it felt like it was a little bit bindy, so I just sprayed it with a little bit of lubricating oil, and know, maybe that'll do the trick. Uh, but I'm not sure how many of you saw the episode where I actually did this. I ended up with the gear off, rotating that shaft. I don't know how many times. There's like no stop, so I don't know if this is just way out of whack or what. Uh, also, I went ahead and turned the key on, and I made sure that the actual actuator was adjusting, you know, it's rotating, everything looks to be working fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this back together and maybe it's fixed. If it's not, we'll be buying ourselves a new shop. This is always my favorite part. Everything's buttoned back up. Time to go for a ride. Before we go, does anyone notice anything weird? Uh, 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 I just noticed it, I left this on there. I was wondering where it went. Glad I found that before I got driving. Here's the true test. Let's see if we're gonna be buying a new shop. Oh yeah, clutch feels great. Mm, that's not looking good. Well, looks like I'm buying a new shock. Great news, check this out. As soon as I reversed, Boom, no shock required. Looks like just need a little bit of lubrication in there. And what in the heck is this? Today is a town off kind of day. All right, we're just out on a, a nice Sunday morning stroll. Connecting to the draggy, we'll go ahead and see what we can get for zero to 60 here. Three, two, one, go. Our Sunday stroll continues. I'm in this area called Alloway Lake, New Jersey, which is just a beautiful area that I stumbled across on accident a few weeks ago. I've never been here before and I'm just blown away by how nice it was. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna take the vet down there for this little cruise and check things out. It's a nice square body for sale. Uh, I don't know how much the price was on it, but look how beautiful this area is. A lot of houses and stuff out there right on the lake. This whole community is basically surrounded by farms. I love it down here. Let's see what this just says. Forward fan. Okay. <laughs> I 
figure I'd like to grab a bite to eat somewhere down here. Nice food for sale. gotta check this place out. This is really unique architecture. I don't know if this was originally a home or if this was something else converted to a home. Check that out. Beats me. Now that is how I like to spend my Sundays. I ended up taking the vet out, you saw the cruise, you saw the zero to 60, and then what you didn't see was where I stopped for lunch at the Alloway Village Inn. I highly recommend it. This isn't artisanal wings, this is real wings. Ask for them just slightly spicier than what the menu shows and they're able to do that for you. I recommend it. Also, I am working on the other cars, don't worry, the next video is going to have the truck and the Lincoln in it, where I put the new water pump in the Lincoln and I put the bigger alternator in the truck. This is a little bit out of sequence. Most of these videos were filmed before Carlisle, but I wanted to get the Carlisle video out while the topic was still hot. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching it. I had a ton of fun filming it. Stay tuned for the next video.